Hilda Charlton's early life was spent in the United Kingdom and the United States. As a young adult, Hilda began performing professionally as a classical and sacred dancer. She said that performances such as the dance of Angkor Wat were intended to help awaken the divine in others. In response to a yearning for her own deeper connection with God, Hilda Charlton travelled to India where she meditated and studied with masters such as Bhagavan Nityananda and Jagad Guru Satya Sai Baba. Returning to the USA, Hilda Charlton taught classes on spirituality for more than 23 years in New York City. Her lectures offered uplifting insights into spiritual self-mastery, the importance of giving and forgiving, unconditional love and remembrance of God. Pioneers of the Soul is a collection of Hilda Charlton's lectures delivered in New York City at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine. Their topics included upcoming changes on our planet, the power of the divine, tips for spiritual development and more. We now share with you an excerpt from Chapter 2, The Real You in Pioneers of the Soul. I am asked to lecture in so many places and I refuse because I have worked so hard and long with you people. I want to see you finished and free and written in the Book of Life. It is my heart's desire to see you free. You've come here so faithfully. Make God your goal. Do all the other things you have to do and be grateful for any job you have, but let God be foremost in your mind. I don't care what it is, cleaning a house, anything, but make God your goal. Put a throne in your heart, Safiya Sai Baba says, and let no one sit in that throne but the Lord. I have known people with power, but no love. I have known people who can do miracles, but have no love. I have known people who can draw crowds and gather great money for it, but have no love. So they are failures in this life or any life. St. Paul spoke about unconditional love in a far better way. You're all familiar with Corinthians 1.13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love envies not. Love boasts not, is not puffed up. Love does not behave itself unseemly seeks not her own, is not easily provoked, thinks no evil. Love rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass, darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now there abides faith hope and love. These three, but the greatest of these, is love. Jesus loved. He doesn't belong only to Christians. He belongs to the Jews, to the Buddhists, to the Hindus, the Muslims, to all who live the way of the truth of life. Love. He is too big, too great to be owned by one group. He fills the universe. For did he not say, the Father and I are one, God and I are one. And for that did he not pay a price, a heavy price, for breaking down the little barriers of mental separation. He went on the cross willingly and opened up a great new world for us to enter when we go past our labels, our little isms. You have been brainwashed with labels from birth and now it is time to think for yourself from deep in your intuition about what truth is. 
Jesus left us a gift of freedom, and we are made new by accepting this gift of the Spirit. It is so simple. We give up our little egos, opinions in exchange for the great spiritual truths, the truths that have existed in all the ages since the world was created. We let in the light of truth, and we are free. Know the truth, and it shall set you free from the bondage of yourself. What is that truth? The one and only truth is that we were created perfect, and perfect shall we be. Your mortality shall take on immortality in this age of Adam, the Adamic age. We are all children of Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were in God consciousness, and they fell because they didn't listen to God. It's not a matter of their putting a fig leaf on and hiding some part. That's not what the story is all about. What the story is all about is that they were in God consciousness, but they disobeyed God and so fell into self-consciousness. The result is what we are, and we have suffered ever since with self-consciousness. What is my real career? Shall I get a better job? Where will I live? Whom shall I marry? What shall I do? How shall I dress? We have become self-conscious instead of being conscious in God. We must come out of that Adamic state, and this is the time to come out of it. That is what being reborn is. It is time for all of us to be reborn back into the consciousness of God, back into this great consciousness which is like a great universe. Let us step over all the pebbles and the dirt and the muck we've put here and walk back into the consciousness of God. Let's say you're in the consciousness of God and then you get petty and complain. That person said this about me. You're right out again, out of the Garden of Eden. So you say, Oh no, I'm out again, nothing doing. Cut, cut that thought, cut, and back in you go, into the consciousness of God, and say, That person must have had a bad time to be so mean. I will send that person unconditional love. It's as simple as that. We have to keep unconditional love all the time. We may fall out of the Garden of Eden, but we have to walk back in fast. As quickly as the negative thought comes, say cut. Go back with a good thought and you're in the consciousness of God again. You're in attunement and you're in safety, no matter what happens around you. Don't try to struggle to give up the negative things. Let Jesus do it for you. He did it for all of us 2,000 years ago and still we haven't accepted his gift. As I told you before, Nitty Ananda suffered like mad every time people came near him. He took on their karma until his pain was excruciating. Ramakrishna took on cancer to pay off the debt. All the great saints who have come have done it. Jesus came and went on the cross willingly. Nobody put him there. He did it for us years ago, and still we haven't accepted the grace of his sacrifice. Let us accept it here tonight. I want to talk on love. You can't very well love a God up there that you can't see, but you can love down here. For more information on Hilda Charlton and her teachings, please visit hildacharlton.com. Magnificent viewers, thank you for your company for today's selections from Pioneers of the Soul by Hilda Charlton, Vegetarian. Chapter 2 the Real You, Part 2 of 2, on Words of Wisdom.